<laughs> Welcome to this week's video. Today we're going to be trying to solve all of your problems in six different ways, plus a little bonus tip on how to prevent your laptop, your computer, your system from overloading in Logic Pro X. My name is George Holliday. I am a producer here at Made on the Road. It's a studio bus. We travel around working with artists, so much online at the moment, and basically helping you guys create the sound that you want to create. Now, I appreciate a lot of you guys are trying to save a lot of costs and trying to work on demos and stuff at home. So even if you're planning on approaching a producer, maybe us, I mean, I don't know, maybe you want us to help you out a little bit. If you're at the stage where you're working on music at home, I want to be helping you guys get the best results you can possibly be getting. I also want to let you know about our course, The Efficient Musician, if you guys are interested in setting yourself up for success to have a great year in 2021, then I hope that this course can help you do so. And the course is called The Efficient Musician. And my elevator pitch is quite simple. It's building the life you wanna live as a working musician. That's what the course is gonna help you do in many different ways from building the environment, helping you deal with the amount of work that you've got in, scheduling loads of time into your diaries. And I promise you, after watching this course, you will set yourself a whole month's worth of stuff. You will not believe how much stuff you have to do as a working musician, and I'm gonna help you get there. So if you like the sound of having a full week of work to do, check out that course. The link is in the description below. But without further ado, six ways to avoid system overload. Let's get straight to it. Oh, f oh sh All right, so this is the project we're gonna be looking at and using today. It's actually a remix. I've only spent a day on this so far, um, but it has all the elements that's gonna get you through. Um, I figured if you guys are working on a production, then I might as well show you a production that's in motion as well. So this is a remix I'm doing for Joe Hertz, and it sounds, when I get my headphones in, a little bit like this. So first we need to understand if we're gonna fix what the overload is, we wanna understand what the problem is. What is overload and why is it happening? Well, well, every computer has memory and RAM and without getting too specific, the more you ask your computer to do, the more limited it, the capacity of the computer is to be able to actually do it. So if you have a small laptop in terms of memory and RAM, the capability of the laptop, if it's small, then the more you ask it to do, the more it's gonna struggle. And that's when you get overload. And overload is just when it's it's maxed out. It can't do any more. It can't do what you're asking it to do. An obvious fix would be to get a brand new laptop, but a lot of us don't have the funds or the luxury of being able to do so. So these six, six fixes will hopefully prevent you from having to get a new laptop and spend all of that money and use what you currently have. Now there's two types of overload. One is whilst you're recording, your laptop might be freezing and cutting out halfway through. It's super annoying and I'm sure we've all experienced that. And the other time you'll experience this is in playback. So when you're adding effects and different plugins and when you're stacking up loads of reverbs, things like that, that is when you're also gonna experience a system overload at times. Now, depending on one or both of those circumstances when you will be getting system overload, I have a potential first fix for you, and that is playing with the buffer size. Now, buffer size can be found here in your preferences in audio, and you can see it here, audio, audio buffer size, and it goes from 32 all the way up to 1024. Now, it's really important to understand what these numbers mean so that you can basically tackle a number of different problems. To have the minimum amount of system overload, you want this number to be on the highest it can possibly be. So whenever I'm mixing or adding plugins, I will have this number on 1024. Now you might find that switching to 1024 is enough for you to be overload free, but there will be a time that you will experience a problem and the big negative about going on a, a higher number is that you'll experience delay. So if you've ever set up your microphone and turned on your 48 volts and you're ready to record but you hear this slight delay between you speaking and what the microphone is picking up. This is down to your buffer size or it's quite likely to be down to your buffer size. When I'm recording, I quite like to get it on 64 if I can. If the project's running a little bit slow for whatever reasons, I'll move it up to 128 and you basically wanna keep moving it up. Anything after 128, you'll, you will start to hear that delay but you wanna keep moving it up until your computer can cope with what you're trying to record. Now the further on you get with a project, so maybe you're onto backing vocals or maybe you're doing crowd vocals and if you've got a lot of channels already there, the higher the number you will need to, to be able to get through. If you've got a powerful enough machine, you should be able to record all your vocals with 64 and 128. What I also recommend is if you have a project where you've got loads of instrumentation, I generally set up a whole new project for just the vocal tracking because I know that I can get this buffer size really, really low, which is gonna be great for the artist that's recording. But this only works if I've bounced an instrumental from the main production 
um, project and then opened up a new project and then I start tracking the vocals in there and then later on I'll, I'll import all of those tracks into the original production project. But that is a little hack if you are struggling and you, you just wanting to get through vocals and you've got so many tracks already in your project, start a new project. Once you've recorded all your vocals and you're happy and you've got everything down, switch over to 1024, hit apply and you'll find that your computer runs a lot smoother. So the next tip is to freeze your tracks. Now, you might never heard of freezing, but what freezing does is create a temporary audio, audio file with all the effects, everything that you've got going on on a particular channel. Now, what this does is it means that when you're hitting play, your computer doesn't have to process all of the effects every time you hit play. It will have created an audio file in the background, which it will then use for playback. So you don't have to use any plugins. Now, the way you do this is you hold option and you press T and this file, this screen will come up and then you want to turn on your freeze. This gives you the option then to, you see these little snowflakes that appear basically. So when you click that, that means that is on. Now, next time you hit play, it will scan through your project, create a file, we'll say it's freezing. Nothing will visually change other than the fact that this snowflake is now turned on. Now this whole channel, I don't actually, there was a bad example because I don't actually have any plugins, but let's find one that maybe does have some plugins. A good example would be a, plugin or a, a track that uses a plugin that's quite CPU intensive. So Serum is typically quite high in CPU compared to like inbuilt plugins. So if you are using a synthesizer plugin, for example, and I've got an EQ here, relatively simple as a track, but if I tick and scan this track, it means my computer isn't having to process what Serum is telling it to do in terms of the synthesizer. It doesn't have to worry about the, the EQ. It will just create an audio file in the background. Now, if you do this with all of your tracks, the positive is CPU is loving it. Your computer is loving it. It's not got much to process. The negative of this is whenever you want to change something on a particular track. So say now I want to go in and play with the EQ of this particular track. I'm going to have to unfreeze the track, then play with the EQ, then refreeze it afterwards. So it can become quite time consuming to do depending on how fast your computer is. But if you're at a stage where a track is pretty much complete, you're happy with the sound of it, you're happy with the effects that are on it, then quickly freeze it and you know that that track is taking up minimal CPU of yours. Now these are currently grayed out, so I cannot go in and change the settings in that EQ, as you can see. Here an error message comes up. So if you wanna be able to have access to that again, just simply unclick that, those become available again and you can go back into your plugin. The third tip and trick, my third tip for getting rid of system overload is low latency mode. You can find this up on your record and then low latency mode here. There's a positive to this in that when you're recording, it's really quick and simple. If you just want to hit low latency mode, you don't want to have to freeze all of your tracks. You don't want to have to change your buffer size, anything like that. Simply hit low latency mode and it will be a really quick shortcut to be able to record or play back without having to process all of the effect. However, the big negative is that what it does is it bypasses a lot of your plugins. What you'll find then is when you're recording, if you're wanting things like reverbs, it will switch all of your reverbs off and you'll have a dry vocal. So it's great for like quick fixes or if you're happy recording with, with no reverbs and delays, anything like that, no effects on your vocal um, or any other instruments for that, for that matter. If you're happy with that, this is a really quick and easy fix. The downside is, like I say, you don't have any effects when you're recording and when you're live or when you're in playback. So you'll have to uncheck low latency mode to be able to hear all of those plugins again and get your project sounding how you intended to before you switched it on. My fourth tip is to use buses. Now I get so many projects sent through to me in the demo stage before I start my own production and there's a different reverb on every single channel. There's a different delay effect on every single channel. If you're not sure what a bus is, it essentially means that you can set up one reverb and route loads of different tracks to that same reverb. For example, with my vocal tracks here, I have got a bus set up here that is sending to a reverb. For that reverb, I also have vocal synth running to it. So from one reverb, I'm actually getting two tracks worth of usage from it. And the more you're doing this, if you've got a reverb you just want to apply to most of your vocals or maybe most of your guitars, rather than having loads of different reverbs, which is, which is eating up all of your computer capacity, 
just have the one and then route things to it and then your computer processor is only pressing the processing the one reverb rather than many at one time this is a really good habit to get into it's actually a technique and, and process that is used professionally and also if you just don't like that reverb and you want to change the reverb for all of your vocals rather than changing every single individual one you just change that one reverb and it's affected all of your vocals all at once which is a good and bad thing so the negative of this is that you might want a different reverb for your backing vocals compared to your lead vocal for example you will want to create two different separate buses for this my fifth tip i think we're on now is simply to just use less plugins a lot of the time you might be using five plugins that could be done with one or two so really work out do you need three different reverbs and if you do need three different reverbs what are they exactly doing do you have two reverbs that are very similar and actually you just need to find a better setting for that one reverb so just scan through your project work out is there other things there that aren't actually doing much and if that's the case then you can afford to to remove and delete those those plugins because less plugins means more cpu space tip number six i think we're on is to bounce your tracks in place so once you're happy with how something sounds so for example let's go to this bass i've got quite a few effects on this bass once i'm happy with that bass sound what i can go and do is Control b which brings up bounce regions in place. You wanna create a new track, I'm gonna mute the old one and I'm gonna hit okay. What this is gonna do is create an audio file with all the effects on it so that my computer doesn't have to process all the effects each time. And if I'm not planning on changing anything later on, I'm super happy with that sound. It's actually quite a good habit to commit and get those tracks bounced in place. Go through your project, see what you're happy with. If you're happy with the hi-hats, if you're happy with the guitars, if you're happy with the backing vocals, bounce them all in place, then you don't need to have those effects anymore. So once that's bounced, you can see the audio file here. Now, on its own, that has the same sound as this, as the MIDI. So I'm personally not done with that sound as of yet, but if I was, then I now have a whole channel here, as you can see, with no effects on it other than the buses. So we've got a bit of reverb there and you've bypassed all of these effects here. Now, the best thing about bouncing in place and just muting, uh, ticking that box to mute the audio is that it's still there. If I wanna go back and change something, I can do. But what I can do now is hit option and T, tick that little on off button and turn that channel off. Now my computer is not even looking at that channel. So it's not gonna be processing any of those things. What you can do if you wanna be super, super smart as well and be really tidy is hide selected track and that is now gone. So all I can see now is the bass track. If you want it back, you just press a little H at the top and you can see it, but it keeps things really tidy. And it means that I've committed now to this. So my computer, I'm saving CPU. I'm saving a headache for myself. It's now less confusing for me as well because there's not many effects in the plugin, so I can turn things really quickly. Just generally a tidier way to work and it's using less CPU. It's just a win-win all around. So that's it. That's my six tips. I've got a bonus one though for you. And this does involve some finances. So that's why I put it as the bonus and not as a main free hack for you. But the main bonus tip I could think of is try looking at investing into a hard drive. Now I actually have a Samsung hard drive on the back of my laptop. It's a tiny little thing and it's a solid state hard drive, which means there's no moving parts. Most slower hard drives have moving parts and you can hear them whirring and buzzing and it's got a spinning disc inside. An SSD drive, a solid state drive, hasn't got any moving parts. So it just generally moves quicker and you have faster capacity on that hard drive. So all of my audio stays onto that little hard drive and I can keep that clear. I empty projects that are finished onto another hard drive so it keeps loads of free space and it saves me having to buy a whole new laptop. Anything creative that I do on my laptop where it's editing videos or making music, I use this solid state hard drive and it's tiny but it is a little bit of a cost. So you're talking a couple hundred quid just to make that investment. But once you do it, it's like having a new, new laptop. It really is. So if you have a little bit of budget to play with and you don't wanna make some of the sacrifices of some of the tips that I've, I've talked about, I actually use all of these tips on a daily basis. So all six of these things together helps me with my CPU and helps me not having these system overloads. But if you do wanna invest something as well, um, highly recommend. And I don't know if all of these six, six tips would work if I was using an older hard drive, for example. So it might just be that your computer is clogged up, doesn't have much memory left, so check it out. Offload a lot of the things onto your computer so you've got more memory, more RAM, and offload it onto a hard drive. So that's it. 
That was a longer video than I thought it was going to be, but I wanted to go into those extra details for you so you guys can truly understand. I didn't want to just say, turn on low latency mode without you fully understanding the ins and outs of what that means. So I hope that's helpful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys want to work with me on your projects, then please do get in touch. My email is team at madeontheroad.co.uk. And also, if you're not ready to work on a project, then still come and follow and join me at, on my Instagram, George Jasmine Holiday with two L's. Don't forget the two L's. Other than that, I'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Guys, stay safe. Look after each other, especially right now. And remember, never stop creating. Oh no, she